Hey guys, Lacey Lee here and of course Jasper. First I want to apologize for the audio in today's video. Now I take the Lincoln Corsair out to the shooting range and have a chat with Andy and Richard. Now I had had audio problems previously so I made sure to test out the mic, test out the volume myself at a certain time and everything was great. I did not take into consideration that different voices carry differently and as well different guns are louder and depending on where we were standing the echo of the gunshots were worse and I just really couldn't do much to salvage things again today. I really apologize but I'm learning and I thank you for your support. And if anyone has any comments or feedback on suggestions on how to work better with audio like this, I'd appreciate it. But the first couple minutes of this video, I'm gonna have a quick look and tell you about the Lincoln Corsair, and then I'll share some of my experiences at the gun range with the guys. If you like today's video, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for your support. On a previous video, I told you guys that I was going to be getting my PAL, which is the possession and acquisition license that you need here in Canada in order to legally purchase and own firearms and ammunition. I introduced you to a couple of my friends that are gonna help me along the way, Andy and Richard, and we took the Ford Explorer and went out to the gun range. Unfortunately, due to bad weather and some technical problems, I didn't capture any of the footage while we were at the range. This is not bad news because the sun is out today. I have the Lincoln Corsair to drive and Andy and Richard, as well as some of my friends, are gonna head back out to the range and answer a few more basic questions about the process and some of the gun laws and regulations here in Canada. Okay, before we get out on the road with this, I know that most of you probably already know this, but for those of you that don't, my girlfriend this week was gushing over how much she loved this Corsair and I started comparing it to the Escape. She stopped me abruptly and was like, you can't compare Ford to Lincoln. They're like apples and oranges. And yes, you've got an entry level vehicle brand like Ford and a premium luxury brand like Lincoln, but she had no idea that Lincoln was, Lincoln is, sorry, the premium brand of Ford. Ford has delivered some really great products over the last couple of years. I have very little to complain about, but I, call me spoiled, really do prefer the high-end premium vehicles. So I'm super excited that the sun is out and I get to take a premium luxury SUV into a little bit more rugged terrain and on the highway and to kind of really drive it like it was meant to be driven. At the end of the day, it is still an SUV and it has some rugged tendencies in it, even though the Lincoln is premium, you kind of get the best of both worlds. I mentioned this has a lot of things in common with the Ford Escape, but it also replaces the Lincoln MKC. My Corsair had the base two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with 250 horsepower and was more than adequate. Corsairs come standard with the SYNC 3 infotainment system, an eight inch touchscreen, and two USB ports. There's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. On the safety side, you get Copilot 360 technology, including blind spot detection with cross traffic warning, pre crash assistance, and automatic emergency braking. What Lincoln has nailed is delivering a luxury level comfort. And I would say it competes with models like the X3 and the Q5. My only complaint is that if you're in a point in your life where you're able to upgrade to a more luxury premium vehicle, this Corsair fully equipped is just under $66,000. And at that point, you might as well go for a German model. However, get into the entry level model Corsair at just over 44 and a half thousand, and it's a great way to make the shift into a premium vehicle. Hey, I'm back with Richard and Andy. I've got a couple of questions to ask them before we get on the range. First of all, something I want to know, Andy, are gun regulations here in Canada um, generally or provincially mandated? Um, they have 
a firearms officer that they would do their own particular enforcement and investigation and license issues issuing and any kind of complaint the local firearm um, center would deal with that and every city municipality they have their own bylaw regarding to discharging firearms in their jurisdiction and such so it's, it's, it's a big mess of who got authority Okay, and if somebody wants it's to... It's clear as mud. Right, clear as mud. Um, if somebody does want to get some information, where would be the best place that they could go? The Government of Canada website or... The, the Firearm Centre website is actually, it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's, uh, it's uh, done by the RCMP. So anybody who's interested in uh, firearms laws in Canada, you can just go on Google, whether it's whichever browser you want, just type in uh, gun laws in Canada and uh, it will usually pop up the rcmp.grc website. Fish and Game Club. Abbotsford Fish and Game Club. This is where Andy is a member. And can you just give me a quick rundown? What do you need to do to get a membership at a, at a gun club? Um, but for this particular one, you need to have a firearm license for obvious reason if you plan to shoot. So I know earlier Richard or Richard made a comment about clear like mud. And if there's one thing I've learned already is that this is not a very black and white process. It's not a very black and white system. It's super frustrating, whether it's getting a membership at a gun range or even so much gray area and things are, I, I don't even know. I was Googling earlier the types of handguns and one website said there was two. One website said there was three, there's long rifles and pistols and it's so confusing. Um, can you help me out on this Richard? Like, uh, I, don't, okay. I don't know. Um, okay, so in all my experience uh, in film with firearms, I can tell you my rule of thumb is if somebody tells you they're a gun expert, they are full of shit. Uh, immediately disregard that person. There's far too many firearms to be an expert. Yeah, many, 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 many types. Um, yeah, let's go get the guns out of the trunk and get some hands-on experience. Before we get to handle real firearms, Andy shows us some proper techniques on how to handle a pistol with a plastic pistol. Remember, safety is always priority with gun handling. All right, when you're ready, ring that, ring that plate. Bring it. Yeah. Good. More like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. More like that. Close. Light it up. Light it up. Okay, you've got it. You got a jam. Okay. So what you're gonna do now? You're gonna drop the mag out. Okay. So drop the mag out. Okay. Okay. Put it in your pocket. And you're gonna get your finger out of the trigger well. And now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna rack the slide a couple of times because there's stuff stuck in there. Good. Rack it again. Again. Sorry, no, full. Sorry, go make it safe. Yeah. Okay. Now, you can be satisfied that it's empty and safe. Yeah. yeah. And you can pop your mag back in. And then you can pull the slide back all the way. Hey, we can employ Richard as a passer. Finger off the trigger. Finger off. Yeah. Out of the, finger always out of the trigger well, unless you're going to shoot. So you pull the slide back. All the way. It's really hard. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now, point again. It's due to a whole bunch of unforeseen, unforeseen aspects of how I am and who I am are. Good. Yeah, going for 26. I love another jam. Yes, you do. That was my last one. Cheap piece of crap. Oh, it could be. Oh, I had a good.
good day today. A great vehicle and some quality time with some friends and a chance to feel and experience the different types of guns that are available. As I mentioned before, getting my PAL and going through the process is the best way I know how to make an educated and informed decision on not only the gun things that are going on right here in Canada, but also do I actually want to own a gun? And I love the fact that companies like Lincoln have made vehicles that are luxurious and really just high end fit and finish incredibly upscale drivability and a vehicle that really, I mean, Lincoln is a premium brand that is, so it's associated with premium luxury products, but it's also designed to go out and get a little dirty, be a little rugged. I mean, you're not going to go rock crawling in this Corsair, but you know, it's nice to know that you can throw some guns in and spend the day at the shooting range possibly go out and do some hiking or camping with some of your gear or just even throw in your golf clubs at the end of the day. If you're looking for something a little bigger, which I think for me, this size is ideal. However, if you maybe wanted to fit a little bit more items in the trunk, like a bike, you might want to consider looking at something like the Nautilus. Now I have my PAL course coming up. I'm super excited and just really looking forward to what my next road trip will be.